Well, we've made a little trip and now we're at the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History. And we are joined by Dr. Sean Brady. You are an entomologist, correct? Yes. And you study bees? I study bees, uh-huh. These are all dead. Why do we study dead bees? So we have a lot of live insects in the museum. There's a lot of them in the insect zoo. And also some of my colleagues do study live insects in their own labs. But all the insects I study are dead. And there's several reasons for that. First of all, when I want to look at an insect under a microscope, well, if it's alive, it doesn't do a very good job of st staying put, staying under the <laughs> microscope. And so we do a lot of very um, intensive studies of the morphology of bees to try to figure out what species they are and how they're using morphology. That's the physical structure of, of the bees, how the body parts are shaped. Bees have a lot of hairs, and so we study kind of how the hairs are distributed and how they help the bee to, to gather pollen. What exactly is a bee? Well, a bee is essentially a vegetarian wasp. <laughs> Most wasps, they hunt prey, and they actually don't eat the prey themselves, but they lay their eggs either on the prey or sometimes even inside of the prey, and then the egg will hatch into a larva and then eat the prey from the inside. In fact, if you ever see the movie Alien, that was inspired by these kind of parasitic predatory wasps. Now, about 120 million years ago, for whatever reason, a lineage of wasps decided to kind of be more of a pacifist. And instead of hunting insects, it decided to feed off of plant pollen. The reason was probably because that's about when flowering plants evolved as well. And so they saw this new kind of food opportunity. And so they evolved to specialize in only eating pollen and nectar from the flowers. How many species of bees are there? Well, there are about 20,000 described species of bees, you know, species that we know about. But there are many, many more thousands of species of bees waiting to be discovered, both out in nature and also in museum collections such as our own. And you all have actually discovered new species of bees right here in your collection, right? That's right. And my graduate student, Silas Bossert, was kind of nosing around this, this very drawer here. And he thought he saw a species of bee that's only known from two specimens in the whole world. And when he further explored it, he found a handful of these new bees in the collection. And he immediately knew that one was a different species of bee, a new species of bee. And he actually described it and named it after his girlfriend, which is flattering. If it was a cockroach, maybe not so flattering, <laughs> but it's nice to have a bee named after you. How many bees do you have in these drawers in this collection? We probably have close to a million bee specimens, so I haven't had time to count them all. <laughs> and if I were to count them all, we'd have new ones after I was done anyway. Our collections are an extremely valuable historical source for our knowledge of bees. Sometimes even we know we're collecting the same species of bee year after year after year, and we're pre preserving that information in the collection because then researchers can use that information to basically go back in time. It's almost like a time machine. 